live stream my name is alex trost and with us today we have a fantastic guest a good friend louis how you doing i'm i'm doing well super happy to be back on the show this so, is I, hi, everyone I, I think this is your third appearance if i'm correct i'm counting one for the gaming episode two for a component carousel and now you're coming back on to teach us some figma plugin stuff Right. Yeah, is that, yeah. So um, two more and you get your free sandwich. So I'm really excited <laughs> for you to keep coming back and uh, work towards it. Honestly, I think I think we we need to have like a punch card system chat. Let's <laughs> let, let's work on it. I uh, would love to send like a ridiculous bit of swag on the fifth one. And I I want yeah. that to be a part because we, we keep having George back. We keep, keep having Cassie back. Louis back. It would be excellent. And Henry's in the chat, says, oh my God, those overalls are perfect. I agree. I didn't get a chance to comment on them Thank yet. Thank you. They're fantastic. <laughs> Love the jumper. Yeah. Um, Eskeliopos, I'm, I'm butchering that name. I know it, but they say, I uh, can't wait to see Mambaleo doing magic stuff as always. So for anyone who might be confused, you are Mambaleo. It's kind of your handle, your nom de plume, as, as they say somewhere, correct? Uh, it's, uh, it used to be Mambo, but Mambo was uh, always uh, already used on forums, so I had to switch for something more complex. So I added more letters. And now Here it's it it's your thing everywhere. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Jacob J Jacob now wants to come on the show for the sweet swag that I haven't thought of what it is yet. But yes, Jacob, you you definitely need to come on to get that swag. Um, but Louis, I'm thrilled to have you back on. Uh, for anyone who might not know either Louis Hobrex or Mambaleo, uh, can you tell them a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, well, I'm a front-end developer in, based in Belgium. Uh, I've been working for seven years now. Uh, and I also do uh, generative stuff, uh, either on paper with my uh, Axidro machine, for people who know it, uh, also on the web, like everything is uh, SVG, WebGL, um, and you know, like everything you can find on GoodPen, I explore the same. Yeah, you, oh. your code pens are an absolute blast. I just dropped your personal site in chat. That's actually, uh, let me bring that up real quick. Uh, do a desktop. Yep, there we go. Um, yeah, you've got a super fun site. I think this changes every time. Or oh, wait, no. It's, uh, yeah, did, does. does this not change anymore or did I just yeah, happen to get reload? Okay, I did reload. I just happened to get the <laughs> same one twice. So I was like, okay, no. Um, oh, uh, thank you for the feedback chat. He said, um, yeah, okay. Did I scream more? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to crank <laughs> you up. There we go. So it should be a bit better now. I'm going to turn myself down Let's in go. relation. All right, cool. Let's thank you. Thank you, better. chat, for letting me know about the, uh, about the volume. Um, but yeah, you have a very fun site. You've done some phenomenal stuff. I love your code pens, love your work. You used to do Viewbox with Cassie Evans. It was a fantastic yep. newsletter. Um, yeah, you've just got so much cool stuff to, to share and to show. And uh, please chat. If you are not already following Louis on uh, Twitter, follow them and um, check out his... Code pen because you have some really fantastic stuff and I love the tutorials that you put out about how SVG animations are made. Like you, you just did this code drops article, right? Is 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 that correct? Uh, well, not article? really. The no, the code drop is is also using WebGL, but it's not exporting to SVG. Got it. Okay. Um, oh, it, it was a similar tutorial, right? It was. Um, I don't know. I I'm, I might be misremembering it, but yeah, you you got some fantastic no, it, yeah. stuff. The, the beginning was the same. I'm loading a 3D object, but on, on this tutorial, I'm exporting it as SVG uh, Got it. circles, and the other one, I'm making it as uh, particles. Got it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, on, on the other one, it felt like you were, like, drawing around the outside of it and kind of, like, doing, like, a wireframe of, of the outside of the deer, right? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, just really fantastic stuff. Um, and you just, yeah, you're a delight to, to, to have on. And uh, we're going to get into some Figma plugin stuff today. And I'm really excited because yeah. I love Figma. Um, I, I don't know how the chat feels, but it is, it, it is to, in my opinion, one of the best uh, developer-friendly tools, not specifically made for developers. Like it is um, just a, a great kind of um, uh, 
yeah, it, it's it's a very developer friendly design tool um, compared to a lot of others. Um, it's 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 free to start with. Uh, you know, w once you get to some deeper features, it's, it starts to get paid. But like, it is a fantastic tool to get your uh, design chops uh, started with. I'm I'm starting to ramble, but I like Figma a lot, and uh, I think Figma plugins are going to be a really helpful thing for anyone who wants to make their workflow a little bit faster. So, uh, what are Figma plugins? How do how are we going to go about this? Like, tell me kind of the the uh the basics of, of what a figma plugin is well so um people I, I guess people know what the plugin is so it's something you can add to a software that exists and then you can enhance your experience there uh the figma plugins have been out for i'd say a year or two now um it was pre-covid so more than a year now yeah um, so basically, anybody can create your, their own uh, plugins. Uh, when you start making your plugins, you work uh, locally, so you can try anything you want. And then when you're ready, when you're happy with what you have, you can publish it on the community part of Figma. And then you can just share your plugin to everybody, and anybody can, can use it for their own uh, designs. So it's, it's very um, uh, useful because it's, it's made by the community, for the community. Um, it's all for free. I don't think. I think th there are some plugins that you may have to pay extra uh, inside. So, for example, Unsplash. Maybe you have to pay if you want to use the paid images. Um, but the... maybe for the paid ones, because they got bought by like Getty yeah. or or something like that. So probably for those. But for the most part, like most of these plugins. I mean, I've got a bunch of them installed already, as you can see. Um, yeah, they work great and they help bring functionality that figma itself did not have like here's a an accessibility color contrast checker um material design icons like being able to add some uh icons right in, into your project or lorem ipsum um all these kinds of things are possible thanks to a figma plugin and like that that's a really powerful thing and the fact that i can make my own for my specific use case or make one and give it to the community like this uh that's that's really exciting yeah you can also build plugins for your own team so for example if you're in a company and you need a plugin for a specific client uh for specific needs you can create your own plugin that you share internally uh so that's that's also really cool when you know your designers are st struggling for some uh layouts or something you can create the plugins as a developer and then you share the plugins internally and anybody uh, in your team can use it. So it's it's not just about the community. It's also um, for you and the team around you. Yeah. So if you want to be uh, the design team's favorite developer, uh, <laughs> this is, this is going to be the stream for you. If you want the entire design team to be like, yeah, they're my favorite. Uh, everyone else, uh, they're fine. But uh, they gave us that, that plugin that solves, that like saves an hour of my time every day that's that's what we're going to be kind of uh learning how to do so awesome so i'm, I'm just kind of scrolling through to give people an idea of like oh like these are the kinds of things that people are solving with plugins just a like google sheets sync um figmoji figma chat allows you to chat inside figma um i think they, they might be rolling out their own versions of that but yeah lots of cool stuff how, how do we get started creating our own oh, oh and, and and first off what language are these written in so uh, that's the cool thing with the Figma plugins because Figma is browser-based. Everything is in JavaScript. So nice. for me, it was super uh, convenient because I only know JavaScript as a programming language and also CSS. Um, no offense. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> Here so we go. Is... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 15 minutes and it's already a fight. <laughs> but yeah, so it's JavaScript. Um, they're using their own API, so you may need to uh, look it up first. But if you're familiar with JavaScript, you can really just um, uh, start writing your own code and basically use the API in a function that they give it to you. Um, and also the cool thing is you can add a UI to your APIs and the UI is basically an iframe. So if oh. you need, for example, to do calls to Google, to Unsplash or to any external platform, you can do anything you want in the iframe. So you open a UI, the UI is an iframe, you do your, your things there, and then you ship it back to the Figma design, and then you can, uh, inside Figma, play with the data you fetched. 
Um, that's cool. So it's it's a it's a really convenient way to work because you have the UI that is an iframe, basically a website. You do whatever you want on it, and then when you have the data ready, uh, you ship it back to Figma, and then Figma as uh, in Figma you use the API to render the shapes and the 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 frames, whatever you need. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So how do we get started here? Is there like an uh, SDK or some kind of kit that we download or documentation that we want to go for? Well, maybe let's, let's first explore how to use a, a, um, a plugin. Uh, okay. And then we will see how we can make our own. Uh, cool. This way people can see uh, how it looks inside Figma. Um, Sounds good. So what you could, uh, well, I already have a plugin that is published on the community. So you could look for it. Uh, and this way we can try it to see if it works. Um, so it's exports. Ah, maybe you should look for my see, name. There we go. Yeah, this That's, one. There you go. Oh, and, and you know uh, what? I, I do have it installed already. <laughs> I've. Uh, ah, remember, thank you. <laughs> when you released it. And look, you got 1,000.3 installs. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, cool. I'm not so looking. <laughs> export original images. So I can go over to Figma and uh, start like a new file. Yeah. Where is the new file? Um, button? I never. Uh, on the top left, you have the plus next to the uh, home button. New design or file. This is, that one? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There we go. All right. So um, are we going to want to bring images in? Because your plugin says export. Yeah, so what the plugin images. does is um, as a developer uh, with Sketch, it was really convenient to export the images, uh, the original images, because you could just rename .sketch into .zip. And then you can unzip the file and get all the orig original uh, PNGs from the design file. But with Figma, yeah. because it's all based on the browser, it's all on the cloud, I couldn't easily export all the images. So I built this plugin uh, at the beginning for me and then for my colleagues. And then I published it on online because it was uh, useful. Um, so what it does is you select uh, any shape on the design that's using an image. And then it will export to you a zip file with all the images uh, from the selection you made. Um, nice. So I don't know if uh, on the Figma, you, I, I saw that you had some uh, templates or like yeah, layouts. Yeah, I can go to, let me pull up the front end horse one. Um, if you have one with images that you use, we can definitely do. See. Let's see what we've got here. Um, so if you go to share images, uh, let's see. So here are some older ones before I was doing them a bit more manually. So let's grab this uh, YouTube thumbnail. And yeah, so here's one that I made for Steve Gardner and 3JS and GSAP. So uh, I've got this. Am I going to right click? So if select yeah. Oh, you just cut out, uh, Louis. Yeah, I can't hear your audio anymore. Hmm. Are you typing to me? No, it doesn't seem like it. Um, all right, so I'm going to see. So I think what Louis said, I'm going to follow the directions until we're able to get him back. Um, select one or more elements that have an image in their fill property. I think this is in... Is it in the fill property? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely got the image in the fill. So I think that I think that clar uh, that qualifies. Let's say clarifies. Um, so YouTube thumbnail. Um, run the plugin. Save the selection on your computer. Awesome. So let's do that. So got the plugins. Come down. So I just right clicked. Coming down to plugins. And oh, I just heard you. I think. Oh, yep. There we you go. Hear me? You are back. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know good. why. Discord, yeah. I I just lost the connection with Discord for some reason. That's weird. Yeah. Um, because export... I could see myself that the webcam was working. Ah, it's funny. Um, yeah. So uh, what I was trying to say is, you have to first select the rectangles that are using uh, the images. So I, I I was a bit lazy there. Okay. You cannot just select the full uh, group. Um, Got it. So okay. If you okay. do, I, I, uh, I don't know. You're using a, a laptop. Uh, Windows or Mac? Windows. I'm on Windows uh, cool. desktop. Yeah. So you see here on the left that the selection is an, uh, like you have an image. Yeah. And so you can do shift control on your face. Uh, yeah. Shift control. Okay. Yeah. But, and you can do it on your face uh, directly in the right. design. Yeah. And so I've got two okay. now. Okay. Now you can do right click and then you access the context menu. Here you go to plugins. Got it. Export and then you have the exports. Yeah. 
as you can tell, I, I like plugins. So I'm very excited for this. <laughs> oh, and I get to pick the format. Uh, yep. Awesome. And, and so this is going to be different because... It, uh, it's, it's different from the export button here because it's exporting the original, not the current size, right? So I think we'll plug yeah, in. So it will um, fetch the images that you used and get the, the original uh, size of the images. So Oh, and it adds it to a zip. No. Nice. Just as you were yeah. saying, like how, how you liked that uh, sketch did that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so uh, Cassie's in the chat and she says, nice dungas. Oh. I believe that <laughs> Thank is you, the outfit you're wearing. So, <laughs> um, awesome. So yeah, if we, uh, check that out. There it is, uh, or it should be any second. Does anyone open this file? Sure, just open it in photos. There we go, amazing. Oh. Um, but yeah, so you're saying this is the the full image. And if I if I were to export it over here, it would be the image at like three 300 pixels or whatever. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Um, nice. So, so this is one example using images. Uh, so as you can see, you can get images from Figma to the UI, and then the UI is exporting the zip. Um, but you Got can it. also import images to the UI and then send it back to Figma. Okay. So it's really a two-way, uh, two-way interaction. Um, awesome. Which and is probably how like really the nice. Unsplash API like plugin works, right? Where like they're getting images from their API and pulling them into the UI. Mm -hmm. And then that UI is sending those images into Figma. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's so you, nice. I don't know if, if you have like a, a uh, like a folder with all the picture of your, uh, like of the attendant of an event, you, you could just import all of them and place them on your design or in a grid or something. Yeah, um, I see. Yeah, right, 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 right. So you can point, so you create a plugin like uh, create mosaic and then you you point it to a folder, takes all those photos and ar arranges them inside. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I love that you made that plugin. Uh, how do we get started making our own? Or or yeah. or uh, do we want to check out that 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 other plugin that you sent me first to kind of give us some, an idea of the code? What do yeah, you think? So what we will see is how to install a plugin. So um, cool. I just shared a link to Figma to you. To a design, okay. um, and you will you will have to uh, duplicate it into your draft. So if you click on the name of invoice demo, yeah, here you can uh, okay, duplicate cool. your draft. All right, so then I can open it. So the plugins thing, we um, do I need to open it on my desktop Figma? Is yep. is that why I'm doing that? Got it. Cool. So closing out of that untitled one. Here's invoice. But I, maybe the plugins copy. are working on on the browser version, but if you work locally, so if you install your plugins and you work on them, you have to be on the computer version. That makes you sense. You cannot upload them on the on the browser version. Cool. Um, so this is another uh, plugin I made because invoicing in Belgium can be really complex uh, because we have to separate the copyrights from uh, like the proper invoice. Uh, and I was really tired of doing it manually every month. So I made this little plugin to just input the the price per day and how many days I worked, and then boom, all the uh, text is getting outputted. Um, nice. So what I shared previously to Alex is a zip file with the all the plugins uh, scripts. So what Alex can do, yeah, here it is. So you have three files. You have the uh, manifest, the JSON, um, which is basically the metadata of the plugin, so the name uh, and so on, but we will see that in a minute. You have the script, so everything that is running inside Figma, and you have the, the UI, so the little pop-up that shows and that can uh, make calls to external uh, API or uh, showing uh, HTML to the user. For example, here we will have a form where you can input the data, and this is inside the UI. Um, awesome. So if you uh, go back to Figma, you can do right-click plugins again, and then you have um, uh, development. Cool. And it's a bit blurry, but you should have import from manifest or something. Yep, import plugin from yeah, manifest exactly. right here. And, so and I didn't have can... to turn on any like developer or tools or anything. It just seems to be no, there. No, it's That's open cool. to anybody. That's great. Okay, cool. So we've got manifest right here. Is that what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that was easy. Oh, uh, manifest oh. error. There's a little error at the bottom. You can't read it. Uh, missing editor oh, type. Oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah, so the the updated the um... got it. Yeah, so uh, Figma recently rolled out uh, new features where they now have two document types. One mm -hmm. is just a Figma file, and it seems like that was Figma. And then there's Fig Jam, which is like their Miro competitor kind of thing uh, that allows you to like brainstorm and stuff. So let me see. Um, let me just open VS Code. Oh, oh actually, it seems like it's already going to open VS Code for me. So yes, Visual Studio Code. Thank you. Cool. So, so this is the manifest. Yeah. All right. So as you can see, you have the name, uh, which is the name that will appear in the context menu. So useful for your users to know what they're using. Uh, the API, it's not the API of, I mean, it's not the version of your uh, plugin. It's really the API of Figma. So since the beginning, ah. it, it has always been 1.00. But if at some point uh, Figma is updating the API, you would be able to say what, which API, which version of the API you're using. So you cannot change it for now. You keep it right. 1.00. Um, and then you have the main, which is cool. the code that is uh, being run when you launch the plugin. And you have the UI uh, for the HTML file. You don't always need a UI. So if you don't have any HTML, HTML file, you don't need to refer uh, the file here. Um, but if needed, then you can add it here. Awesome. And the thing that we need to add is um, so another property in the JSON here, which is editor type with capital. Yeah, exactly. And then it's an array. Ah, and okay. Yeah, you have. I mean, maybe you can just do Figma because I, well, it seems yeah, maybe you can yeah, try. one one or both, and then it has an array Figma Fig Jam. So I think you're probably right. Oh, um, yeah. Cool. I've never used the, the Figma Jam, so I don't know um, exactly what it does, um, but may, yeah. maybe let's keep for Figma. I think the just basic Figma would be probably now. smart. Yeah, Fig Jam is a bit <laughs> different. All right, so should, should we try it again now? Yep. Cool. Plugins. Uh, I'll scroll down a little bit. Development, import plugin from manifest. Manifest open. And there we go. Invoices has Yay. been imported. Cool. Now, if, if I update invoices do i have to go through like a, re a refresh or anything or it's going to load it no nope. yeah so that's a cool thing if you you just need to rerun the plugin and then uh but uh it will just load the file every time again there is no cache system or anything awesome. uh, as long as you work locally it's always uh up to date with the local files nice um, um oh oh and so it, and because i'm installing it locally it doesn't get in mm -hmm. my main list it tucks it away in the development panel exactly Cool. Uh, what you can do to make it run is select the the, the frame you want to use the plugin. So you select the, this one, the template. Cool. And hey, and Steph, then you can good to see you. Sorry, I just want to say hi to Steph. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Mail egg, welcome. More people I know. Got some good people in here. So, All right, so I selected the frame. And you run in invoice. invoices. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. And here you can type your price. Yeah, so this is the UI that, that you've, you've built mm -hmm. for it. So I'm I'm much much cheaper than you. Uh, <laughs> honestly, sometimes I pay people just to let me uh, build them stuff. Uh, copyright per day, yeah. I'm also like like sixty. Let's go seventy, and yeah, fifteen fourteen days submit. Cool, and then it goes and it just does all the math in JavaScript and exports. Nice. That's a see, yeah. like, that's such a cool tool to solve the problem that that you are having. Uh, and this is a very unique problem to you. I mean, well, and and Belgium, but <laughs> you specifically for for this kind of an invoice, like to abstract it bigger, might be a little bit more work. But uh, for you, it's probably saving you a lot of money or a, a lot of time, which is money. Some people say They're, they say it's the same thing. Yeah. What's that about? <laughs> well, uh, money. I don't know. <laughs> time is money. But what? No, no, that's that's a lie. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's that's really why I, I like the Figma plugins at first, is because you can solve problems that you have only on your side, and it's really made for lazy people, in my opinion. For example, here I'm like, it took me maybe more time than oh, yeah. making six invoicing, but now I feel like I'm a superhero and I can just make my invoices in a in a two clicks thing. Oh yeah, there's that um, XKCD <laughs> about like automation, you know, like the time spent versus the time automated. All, yeah, yeah. <laughs> automating is more fun. I don't know. It's it's good. So uh, uh, what you could do is open the plugin again, and uh, we will see uh, right before we start coding the the dev tools uh, of Figma. Um, yeah. So if you go back to Figma and you open the UI, oh okay, 
Um, open the UI. Do wait, I'm doing what? Oh, oh, oh okay. So open. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plugins. So you you reopen the you relaunch the plugin. Cool. And you right click again and open the. Uh, so you right click in Figma and you go to plugins, okay. development, and then here you have open console. Oh. And the what? same as working for website. This is what you need when you make your uh, plugins for Figma because you, we saw previously that sometimes we have the red bar that gives you uh, some uh, data, but sometimes you don't get this and the dev tools here will really help you. Um, this is the, the console for the whole Figma uh, interface, but also here you can see the iframe with the my plugin inside. I feel like you're showing behind a curtain that I wasn't supposed to see behind. <laughs> Like, this is wild to me having, I mean, like, I, I knew this was here, but at the same time, I feel like Figma's going to be sending their lawyers for me in a second or something. I don't know. This is just, <laughs> just, just really cool. Yeah, we're right. not, like, we're not used to see, like, behind the scene of uh, software. It's usually this big box you, you play with and it's right. locked. But here you can really, uh, and you can, like, change things on the fly if you need, but yeah. maybe you shouldn't, but... Um... So you can see that here we have a we have a form and we have all the all the the label and inputs for the form, and and this is HTML. So if you need a very complex UI, if you can even make a website inside a plugin for some reason, you could make your portfolio as a plugin and and show the portfolio inside the UI. <laughs> the, Genius. There is no limit. Genius. We are we are absolutely doing that. Uh, that that's that's going to be the new designer portfolio. Is install my plugin. <laughs> And then hire me for projects. That <laughs> that that shows that you've got a certain set of skills uh, and don't know how actual websites work, <laughs> or didn't want to pay for a domain name. It's basically what that shows. Just make a plugin and yeah. publish it. It's free. <laughs> they will host the files for you. Um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's give it a try then. Yeah. So uh, and and, and, uh, and just a quick like the code is just JavaScript. Like I'm, I'm scrolling the quick through it. Uh, but this yeah. is the, the actual JavaScript there, um, and you're just kind of going through, and you're doing a lot of the the math to figure out the actual um, outputs here. But mm -hmm. this doesn't seem to be uh, any kind of yeah, like it seems like you're just doing job manipulation in JavaScript, right? It's it's very similar. It's uh, um, yeah. Oh, frame. <laughs> okay, interesting. So frame might be like a. Uh, you create a frame ah. and then you append any child in it. Cool. All right. I'm excited to get into this. Cool. So uh, <laughs> where do we start? Well, you create a new folder with a manifest.json, of course. Okay. This is the beginning for all the plugins. All right. Let's uh, come back up. New folder. Um, what are we, uh, do we... Do we have an idea for what kind of a plugin we're going to be building? Yeah, well, we're going to start to um, so output random shapes on like create a frame, output shapes, and then we will add a UI so that you, we can um, ask for things to the to Figma and customize what we output. Uh, but in the end, we will try to uh, generate uh, stars, like random stars, cool. random size, random color, and so on. Um, star maker, star generator, uh, <laughs> star generator thinking of a uh, folder name uh that is dank mono is 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 my font uh sex sex sauce S -s -sox. sorry i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna butcher <laughs> that i'm gonna I, I can spend the next 10 minutes trying to get that right i'm just, i'm not gonna do it but uh yeah oh, and welcome i saw you, you just joined great to have you uh let me see if i can get to pc downloads uh Let's see if I can real quick navigate my, uh, is it in here? I think it might be in here. Downloads. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And then uh, yeah, Figma. Cool. Look at me. Terminal hacking like a champ. Uh, yes, I trust myself. Cool. Um, nice. Star-Lord. Oh, Star-Lord. Nicely done. Life. <laughs> I like that a lot more. That is what much better. All right, Star Lord, love it. All right, um, and then we want a manifest.json, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. So same as before, we have a name. Um, 
cool. So I was, was going to copy this, but you, I guess you can just copy paste. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's be but lazy. Yeah, just name. We can go Star Lord. Uh, API is going to stay the same because that's the API mm -hmm. that's released, right? Yeah. Um, and then these look like sensible defaults for what we will call our code and our UI. I can, I can, I can live with those. And then this is a requirement too. So this looks good, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and then we will, yeah. So we will create the code.js file and also the UI.html because awesome. I think Figma won't be happy if we don't have those. Makes sense. Uh, uh, what was the other one? UI.html. UI. Awesome. The, the, the names of the files can be anything. Uh, I think I copied what Figma is making in the samples uh, show online. But Cool. As, as long as we point it. to it correctly, it'll be fine. But the manifest.json yep. has to be manifest.json. Cool. Makes sense. Um, okay, so uh, so the, when we run a plugin, code.js is the first file that's being uh, uh, called by okay. Figma. So if you need the UI, uh, we will see that later, but the, it's the code.js that is uh, calling the UI iframe. Um, uh -huh. But for now, we won't use it, so we can just uh, create a frame. Um, and to do that, you can create a new variable that we will call frame. Cool. Super quick, uh, just in case someone's like following along, um, where are are the docs that I could find for? Oh yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, totally fine. Um, I, I just, I, <laughs> I, even I just don't want it to it. seem like this is in uh, you know like knowledge that was passed down <laughs> to you from your from your forefathers or whatever, right? Like, <laughs> but uh, make, make let everybody know that uh, you know we're all just looking at docs and figuring stuff out. Um, are I'm you... sharing the docs on the, ah, cool. on the chat. Go. Awesome. All right. I'm going to drop those into the... Oh, it's already in the chat. Oh, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> um, Mark. Sweet. So, yeah, yeah, so okay, the... Cool. That, that's that's the, helpful. The, 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 the docs are actually um, very useful uh, if you read them. And I know most of the people, me included, we don't really read them. We just <laughs> dive into the code and we try things and it breaks. <laughs> Uh, but nice. for me, yep. you you should um, at least write half of it uh, in at least the first few chapters because it, there are a few things you need to understand at first. Uh, for example, the fact that the UI is being called by the code, the JS, and yeah. so on. Um, but what can really help uh, help you is you, you scroll at the on the left. You have samples, and it's a link to a GitHub uh, repository. And nice. here you can just download a sample and run the sample, see what it does, and see uh, if what you're trying to do is similar to that. Got uh, it. Like and here's you can an read SVG the code. inserter. So that feels like kind of like what we're sort of going for a little bit, right? So like I, I might check this out. Uh, it's cool that it can take TypeScript, or is that just going to... Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it natively takes TypeScript or I have to put a build process between mm. it and that. I don't think it does because the manifest uh, link to this file is actually pointing to code.js and that interesting. TypeScript file. Yeah, I was going to say um, that'd, be, that'd be an interesting thing for them to work on building in. Um, but cool. So that's great that they have all those examples to lean on. <laughs> yeah, very useful. Um, <laughs> Henry so, yeah, just have this... a really tricky word to avoid. Scott, good to see you. <laughs> um, so th this is uh, the, if you go back to the, the documentation, um, you, you have uh, oh, sorry, a lot of text. Uh, yeah, if you go uh, click through back, back. Some stuff. There we go. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so text. here you have a lot of how to and so on. So a lot of text. But if you go on the top right, you have the API reference, and that's really your your bible for the when you write your plugins. Awesome. Um, and the the API reference is a bit more like it's nah, not the best documentation. So the text is really well written, and you have a lot of how to tutorials. But for me, here it's a bit complex to understand uh, what you're trying to do because, um, well, we'll see while we work. But it's it's really based on object. So you have an object, uh, you you create a new frame, and then inside the frame you have access to new functions, and you have to know what uh, class can actually make the calls to create new objects and so on. So it's sometimes a bit messy in my opinion, um, but it works well. So okay. I cannot blame them for that. Yeah, um, I mean, just the uh, I already lost. I already lost chat. They got. I was. I was trying to avoid <laughs> the, trying to avoid a word, 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, I failed. Um, no, I, 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 I think, yeah, it's impossible to avoid. I think the number of plugins uh, and the usefulness of, of them kind of speaks to, yeah, this this works, right? Like, like, like it's, yeah. I think that's kind of the, the, the proof uh, there. Credit to, uh, yeah, <laughs> which word, Alex? <laughs> You're a monster, Henry. <laughs> uh, cool. So documentation, super helpful. Thank you for those tips on like uh, your experience with it because, yeah, that, that's always n n nice to hear. Uh, and the, 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 the samples is a really helpful thing to, to know Yeah, about. Sam samples is really what you should start with if you never played with uh, plugins. Yeah, that's great. Um, All right. So let's go back to our uh, first plugin. Okay, um, here. We will create a frame. So a frame in Figma is a, a kind of an artboard, the same way you have an Illustrator. Um, so you can create a variable frame, uh, so um, const frame. Cool. That's I mean, nice yeah, we, we, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, so it's it's Electron, so I can do pretty much, you know, I, I, my question was going to be, does that have to be var or like, is it modern stuff? But I'm pretty sure it's going to be like the newest Chrome or one of the newer Chromes. So it's going to be const and I can do. Yeah, you can use whatever. const. Cool. Um, const frame. Even though it won't change much in our case. But um, so frame is equal to Figma. So Figma is really the, the main uh, variable we use for all the, um, how to say that, the basic objects. Um, okay. Right, so I Figma dot yeah, if you go on the on the left, you have the Figma objects on the top left. Um, Sorry, chat chat is chat is counting the number of times <laughs> I say the word right, and they've nailed it because I know that I <laughs> it's a bad like habit that I have where I say right, 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 and I I <laughs> I can't get rid of it. I I yeah, chat is like skinning me alive on stream. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so figma.create rectangle, figma.close plugin. So basically everything mm -hmm. pretty much comes from this uh, f global Figma object, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so in our case, we're going to uh, use the create frame function to create a frame. Cool. Thing itself uh, explanatory. Awesome. And the frame, we will uh, give it a size. And to do so, uh, we have to uh, call a function on our frame variable. So you can do frame dot uh, resize without constraints. Okay. Yeah. And here you can give it uh, the width and the height of the frame. So uh, you can make it the width and the height you want. So like it's just like 500, 600, 500? Yeah, 500, 500. Cool. That's perfect. Um, and Let's run the plugin and see what it does and see if it at, at least it works. That That's a good start, I think. All right, sounds good. Chat, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> see, like people don't understand that like any attention from me is good attention. So d d ripping me apart, I'm, I'm still having fun. I'm still loving <laughs> This is so funny. Cassie just made my middle name. And it's good because I don't actually have a middle name, uh, the word right, and that, that should be it. So if I run our new plugins, I have to add our new yeah, plugin Yeah, you first, first need to import. No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. You... Oh, interesting. You can start from here, though, it, it looks like. Uh, or is uh, that for later? That's new. <laughs> Got it. We... Uh, you're like, back in my day, we had to do it all from <laughs> scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Import plugin from manifest. All right. Well, to be uh, honest, it's been a, a few months I haven't been working on on plugins, but yeah, it's all good. I mean, all right, I, so... I work on the same again and again. So God. yeah, let's import. Okay, it it did import, so that's it a good did start. Import. That is that is something. All right, Star Lord. Yeah, it is, and it <laughs> is five hundred by five hundred. Just that simple. <laughs> Interesting that it's still running. Is is there a thing where like I need to say I'm oh. done? Yeah, <laughs> we need to do that. That's all good. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's not a big deal if you don't because you can just close it from here. But yeah. it's, uh, I it's, think it's better it's, if you. It's a nice user experience kind of thing where <laughs> when the plugin when finishes, the... it doesn't say it's running still. Um, and I'm. Uh... Hmm. Oh yeah, because when you have a UI, as soon as you close the UI, it does end the plugin. 
so that's why I uh, ah wait so Figma we ah you can just do Figma dot uh, close plugin cool yeah this uh, and uh, the quick tip for Figma if you do Control Alt P it will run the last plugin you executed nice. That's a great tip, especially when you're developing a plugin. Uh, and what Ben said in chat. Control of, Alt P. Yeah, I just did it. It's interesting that it keeps putting it in the same spot. Yeah, it's it's at the center of the, the of the of document. God. Um, and yeah, we're no longer getting that like still running thing. Um, ben, what 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 you just said about uh, wanting to be like a stream host and affirm everything that the person is saying. Yeah, like I feel that need to to give that feedback. But then when you watch it back, it's like, why won't I shut up? Why won't I just be quiet and let the person talk? So yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, oh, and Scott asks, um, can you use CSS to style things with Figma plugins? Like apply some CSS to a thing. Hmm. Um, are, you, um, are you asking inside the iframe, like, like inside, uh, like I've got this confetti plugin, like inside here, Scott, or... Use CSS to style like like if, if I select this and I say like make cool like it gives like a CSS gradient in the background is is that kind of what you're saying? I'm, you know, life you 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 might be right. I'm I'm not sure which. Oh, the second one. So can yeah, yeah. So can you write CSS in your plugin and it will update the the, the design inside the frame? Figma. Yeah, like can I run like awesomeize the plugin and and mm. it comes through and adds like. Well, uh, it's, it's not part something. of the yeah, it's not part of the API from Figma. So when you, for example, when we wanna play uh, with colors, you cannot just make uh, CSS uh, width and height and then the background color and so on. It's all based on the on the Figma API. Um, but maybe there is a plugin that, like I don't know, you could select a rectangle and give it the CSS uh, styles. Um, yeah, I don't know about CSS. I mean, you. You might have to play within within like the Figma way of doing it. You you might not be able to just take CSS and and like port it into Figma. Is is what it seems like. But that's a good question, Scott. I I would be interested in seeing, yeah, like paint style. It looks like it's probably not just straight up CSS. Um, but I'd be interested in seeing, and in, then in learning more about that. But um and. Henry says it's a sick. This is one of my favorite features of Framer, the like easy extensibility access to the canvas and user interface through code. So yeah, I I, I like it, it is very approachable here, like just in how quickly we've been able to add our own plugin. But I also like I I feel like Framer makes it more obvious that um, you can affect it with code, where this is a little bit more tucked away, but just as accessible once you know where to look. So that this is this is so cool. Um, all right, so we've got uh, a plugin that that makes a frame dead center and then closes out. Let's let's add a bit more yep. <laughs> life to this. No, but 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 it's it's an awesome start. Like I couldn't do this yesterday, so I'm, I'm already <laughs> I'm already thrilled. Um, so the, uh, the other thing you mentioned, the fact that the frame is always at the center of the document, it's a bit annoying. Yeah. So what we can do is um, uh, position the frame based on where the user is actually looking at. So cool. we can retrieve the coordinates of. Uh, kind of where where we are when we are in the document of Figma. Okay. Um, so to move the frame, we can do frame.x uh, to give it uh, the x coordinates is equal to, uh, fi so equal okay. uh, figma.viewport.center.x. Ah. So this is the center of kind of the camera where we look at. And then uh, because it's a frame, uh, the X and Y coordinates is based on the top left of the corner top left. Okay. So we need to do minus half of the width. So minus 250. Ah, nice. Uh, so or, or so if we do this like const. Yeah, you could make variables for that. Right, because I have a feeling we're going to be changing it later or something. So for now, I'll just do that. Yeah, and you can duplicate the line and make it uh, dot y instead of dot x. Nice. And frame height. Awesome. So if we run that again, 
Um, so I, I did hit save. Uh, it said sh shift alt control P. alt P control control alt P. Alt -P. Oh, that was my confetti. Hold oh, on. but you're yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work, Lou. <laughs> Star Lord. That's what I need. Interesting. Oh. Hmm. Did you really save? <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, frame. Wait. Oh, weird. It didn't. Oh, frame. Yeah. Huh. I thought I changed that. Um. Yeah. Do I need to resize without constraints? Frame with frame height. Am am I doing this in the right order, or does this need to be higher up? No, no, no. This this should be this should be good. Okay. Get, try it again. Can you control yeah. P? There we go. Oh, All right. here it is. It so if you move that. the camera now, nice. it will always be at the center. Sweet. Yay. Bit them out. Nice. That's awesome. That works great. Um, Jacob asks, does frame size depend on zoom? It's. I'm guessing it's the units. So I'm zooming in. Uh, so it's it it's all in pixels. Bigger. Yeah. So Yeah, so now it's it's completely based on uh I I mean I'm guessing you probably could. You can probably get viewport like mm -hmm. size or something and you might be able to do that, but you probably wouldn't want to do that most often is is my guess. Um yeah. but yeah, it's it seems like we would probably have access to that information, Jacob. But uh but the the, the way we're doing it here, it is based on um, like 500 pixels. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right, so we've got our um, little thing. It's going dead center. Nice. And we can add stuff okay. into it. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing the frame is kind of like a, like a creating a div or creating like, like, like document or body, right? And now I can add stuff into it, append child, do all that kinds of similar JavaScript stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So we will create a node. Uh, I did the, the properties of the nodes and append the node inside the, the frame. Awesome. Um, so let's give it a try for a, a circle, for example. Cool. So you can create a new const circle. And it's equal to figma.create ellipse. Awesome. And uh, you can do circle.resize to give it a size. Um, then, what's the resize uh, without constraints versus resize? Do you know? Um, good question. Um, if so you don't, that's fine. Are... It's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at the docs right now. <laughs> no, 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 no resize. worries. I wasn't sure when when I should choose one or the other. Oh, because if you do resize, you resize everything that is inside. And if you do resize without constraint, you um, the children are not impacted by the resize. But uh, here, it, you, we could use resize because it's still empty. Uh, right. But if you have things inside, it could be a problem. Got it. So, uh, okay. So I just put a name to what I've been doing, like, like, like what I've been doing a thing for a while. So like, if I, if I do this, that's resize mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is, is what I'm understanding, right? Where everything goes down and up. And then this, if I, so like, like I, I'm using a different tool for chat. Uh, if I do this, that's resize without constraints is is my guess, or or something along those lines is well, that that kind of a resize. I don't know, but 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 those are two different things that I'm kind of like understanding. Ah, so like the API is 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 expecting that, or like that's the technical term for what I've been I've been doing with those uh, tools. Um. No worries yeah. if, if 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 you don't know that 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 might be no. Well, I one I'm, I I think it's about the constraints uh, because the, the doc says if the node contains children with con constraints, it applies those constraints during resizing. Um, but I'm not oh, sure good. about it. Oh, the the constraint is, isn't it the thing on the top? Uh, uh so like the, the the way I just did that. Uh, well, here I, on, I, on I the right, on the right, you have you have um if you, scale and if move. You, Oh, or oh, or you mean with that constraint? Um, probably not. No, 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 no. no. If you if you select any nodes, like if you go on the left on the template, uh, on the on my file, click anywhere ah. here on the right, you have the constraint. I think this is this. For, for example, when you when when you have a sticky navigation and you resize, you can you can make the navigation always sticky when you resize. Um, right. Yeah. It's um, always. And if you like change some of these features, it'll stretch. Yeah, like see how I kind of yeah, mess that one up. Yeah. And I don't, so, I don't like doing that. So I, I will hold 
control and resize with, without constraints, I, I think is what that is. Yeah, um, so it's really resized with the background and not, not everything that is inside. Right. All right, cool. This is this is uh, helpful. Um, GK Nook, uh, that's like resizing without holding command control. Ex exactly. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, you came in at the perfect time and great to see you. And yeah, awesome. Thank you for kind of um, con confirming that. That's that's th that sort of thing. I was wrong. So that that this is more um, scaling, I think is what they, they might call it. Yeah, that's scaling. So I was incorrect. Awesome, but I'm kind of understanding deeper the uh, Figma API and how it works. That's great. Okay, so circle resize, and we're yep. gonna pass it uh, some coordinates or, or some some values. So, yeah, the so the width and the height because it's an ellipse. Uh, cool. It's not about radius. Well, I mean, it's it's radius, but it's the same. I mean, it's the x radius and the y radius. Okay. So what should like fifty? Oh, 50 I don't or? know, like two hundred, two hundred to make it the perfect circle. Cool. Okay, uh, and then again the x and the y, uh, we could do circle dot x um, uh, if you want to make it uh, from the frame width. We could do frame width uh, divided by two minus two hundred divided by two, which seems like very complex. Okay. Yeah, we I we could that. do. And and so just to get a sense. Um, this positioning now, now that I'm, well, or once I add it to um, the frame, it's going to be based on the frame, not based on Figma's bigger mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's based specifically on that. Got it. If you don't append it to the the frame, it will be append to the document. So it will use the document's uh, coordinates. Got uh, it. So at the moment, if you run the plugin, we will see the circle always coming back at the same position inside the document. Uh, okay. But if as soon as we happen to the the, chi the ellipse, yeah, uh, C, there it is, yeah. and it comes in with with the normal like if I make a rectangle, it comes in with that gray. So it's 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 doing it's the same default. thing that Figma's doing when I do stuff manually. This is really cool. Uh, so let's make the same for the Y coordinates. Cool. Um, and yeah, frame height, but yeah, it should be the same right now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And let's append so the circle so frame dot append child circle, yeah. Okay. And now, if you run, we will have a circle in the center of a frame. Woo! Nice. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how we can play with the colors. So cool. the colors, uh, we have two things. So the background and the uh, borders. That's how we would say in CSS. Uh, with Figma, yeah. it's the fields and it's the strokes. Right. Um, so you can have multiple uh, fields, you can have multiple strokes. It's an array, and you can add any uh, any amount of it uh, you want. Oh, um, cool. So let's see how to add the basic uh, background. So you can do circle dot fields equal uh, an array. Okay. And it's an object. So you create a first object. Oh. And we have here two properties. The first one is the type of background. So let's make it uh, type uh, solids, capital solids, lower, uh, uppercase, everything lower, uppercase. Oh, got it. Yeah. Solids, uh, solids, no S at the end. Got it. Yeah. And then the second uh, property is color. And color is another object with RGB. Uh, well, it's R. Uh, it's three keys, so Makes R, sense. one, G, one, and B, one. Okay. Um, so, so the values are always between zero and one, not Got between it. zero and two fifty-five. Got it. So it's more uh, like it's, um, we, we we were doing shaders yesterday, so working yeah. with like a vec three kind of thing. Exactly. Got it. Um, so let's make a R zero, so that we have some kind of a cool. greenish blue, and if we run that. We will have a circle with a background. Let's see. Nice. Yay. Awesome. Okay. That was really, really simple. Um, G Nook says uh, it scales when you have the property on scale. If you have it on center, it's like object center from the top of his head. Got it. Okay. And Lu and uh, as I say, uh, Henry likes when you say color. So <laughs> let's keep doing okay. it. Okay. <laughs> First time I've been told that. But... <laughs> the color 
color. Don't don't ban that word, chat. All right. <laughs> cool. Um, um, so do we want to go and do stroke now? Is that what we're? Yeah, you can replace fields by strokes, strokes, plural strokes. I I I love that it's just an array because like if chat's not um, too familiar with Figma, you can add fills on top. So like this is they just added a uh, a black that's transparent. You can also do a gradient in here. And so there's there's lots you can do, and you can see like they're all stacked on top of each other. That's what we're doing with that array, right? That's really cool. So yeah, thank you for uh, explaining that bit. It's it, it's just neat seeing how like oh they're just they just made a really good Electron app. They just made a great JavaScript app. That's so cool. Um, strokes. Yep. And let's make it fun. So in the G or the B or which you instead of one. You can make mat the random. Nice. All right, let's see what we got. If you run again the plugin. So but should we make the stroke a little bit bigger so we can kind of? Yeah. How do we do that? Um, it's gonna be a weight, maybe. I'm guessing. Uh, hmm. This doesn't have a label on it, so I can't guess what that is. Do you know what the uh, stroke? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find in the in the docs, but <laughs> I'm, like I said, it's not always the easiest. Stroke cap, stroke join. Um, what about the ellipse? And also, sorry stroke about that white. noise, chat. It's stroke white, uh, okay. but it's weird because you can have you cannot have different. Uh, so it's circle dot stroke white equal five let's say oh but that'll apply to all the strokes that's interesting yeah that but can you just give it a try and see it yeah yeah worked it did okay so it does and if you blue. select the circle hmm, same blue um yeah it's got five and so oh, i can't make the, that any you, can, you cannot you yeah. cannot add another stroke to an element you can only have one i oh, know you do but it's always the same weight Got it. That makes sense then. That's okay. interesting. Yeah. I don't um, totally get why. I guess it's just to stack things or to. I, I don't know yeah. how that. But again, you can have a gradient of. Uh, I think the blue should be above the, the gradient now. Are you? Oh no, we see it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you're going for, cool. But uh, I don't. I don't <laughs> know why you would, right? But anyway. Uh, math.random doesn't seem to be... Well, doing... maybe you can make the R and the B uh, random as well, so that everything is random color. Yeah. All right. Hey. We're getting something. And if you you can run it there many times and make an animation uh, live. Yay. Nice. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, so that's the first trial. Yeah. Good. Now... Um, Let's do some math. Are you ready for that? I am ready. I mean, probably <laughs> not, but I'm going to claim that I'm ready. Yes. Okay. Um, have you ever uh, made a star from JavaScript or from code? Yeah. A star? Like a sure. star? No, nope. Nope. <laughs> Never have. I <laughs> can tried. barely do that with a pencil, let alone from code. Oh. Uh, uh, well, okay. I can. Okay. Okay. I can do the da 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 da, but I can't. Yeah. I can't go. No, but this is awful. I mean, that's do it by hand. It's just yeah. yeah. I can do the trick. Uh, I used to be a teacher. I would do that a lot, right? On homework, da 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 da. da, da. I, I got in, in, into the flow, so pretty. I'm pretty good with that one, but I can't. I can't I've never done it with code. Uh, okay, so Sox the, made the way one it in works. Lego, so that's pretty cool. Ooh, no, using logo. What's logo? Oh, oh, I have read that as Lego using yeah. logo. I'm not sure what logo I don't is. Know what's logo. I don't know. It's a knockoff of Lego. It's not as popular, but it's still pretty fun. All right, cool. So how, how are we going to do it with code Let's now? Let's make a star. It's, um, so a star is inside a, cir a circle. Okay. And what we will do is uh, find the uh, five or the six um, points of the stars. So we will go through the circle and make one point on the outside of the circle. So we have two circles, a big one and a small one. Okay. So we go on the big one and then in the small one and then on the big one the small one big one small one big one small one and we turn as an angle 
So the angle is going 360 degrees. Ah. And every, like, because we need one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on points, on each point, we go on the big circle, small circle, big circle, small circle. And this way, um, we draw a star. Cool. Okay. So, um, so what we will need is a for loop to go through all the points uh, uh, along the star. Uh, and let's start with uh, 10 points. So let's equal I. Whoa, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's That right there is the reason why I always kind of forget how to do them. Ex or like I forget what the exact <laughs> syntax is because I lean on that so heavily. Like, I don't, I'm like, is it commas in between or is it semi? I think it's semicolon. Yeah, I always forget when I have to do it, like, without this. Like, in code pen, I forget. Um, yeah, so not a dot length. So, we want to do 10, you said, or? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, what we will first calculate is the angle. So, we know we have uh, 10 points here, and we want an angle that is every time one tenth of 360 degrees uh, time i, or uh, time index here. Um, so you can make a, a const angle, const angle. In, inside the for loop? Yeah. Cool. So it's equal to i uh, index divided by 10. OK. Uh, oh, times. Index. Yeah, sorry, um, I fine. often use i. It's all good. We can do uh, that. Times mat, mat, mat dot pi times 2. Uh, because we're using uh, uh, radians here and not degrees. Uh, no parentheses. It's Thank just math.py. It's a constant. Yeah. Cool. So math.py right. times 2. So 2 pi is one full uh, circle. Uh, so this is equal to 360s. It's just a different unit. Um, we could do some calculation to convert degrees to uh, radians, but it's, I mean, it's not necessary here. Yeah, this works uh, great. Yeah. Cool. So now we have the angle. We can calculate the coordinates, the x and y coordinates of the points along the circle. Um, so you can do uh, let x equal uh, mat dot cos, so for cosine parentheses angle. Um, yep, that's it. And then okay. do the same with y. And instead of using cosine, we use sine. Cool. So this will give us uh, the 2D coordinates of the points like each time on the circle. So we have 10 points along the circle. Um, maybe we can already try with that. So we have the coordinates. What we need to do is create a, a path, so a SVG path. Cool. We will connect all the points. Um, to start a path in SVG, um, yeah, you can create a variable that is an empty string for now. Okay. And uh... it's a let because we will update the... So let path equal empty string. Yeah, awesome. perfect. And inside the loop, if uh, i is equal to 0, we need to do something a little different. Uh, we need to do path is equal to uh, parenthesis m, capital M. Uh, it's, a, it's a quote, sorry. It's a string. OK, cool. Yeah. Oh, so we're starting the SVG here. Yeah, so we're starting to draw the SVG. And because it's the first point, we need to move the pointer. So the same way you would start a drawing, you need to move your hand at some point. So we move right. with the M letter to say where we're going to move. And then we will use the L letter to say that we draw a line to the new coordinates. Um, OK, so or what's And next? maybe you can do a literals if you have like the back tick. Yep. It can be simpler. Um, so M space. And then uh, dollar bra uh, curly brackets, yeah, x time. And here it's the outside circle, so the big circle. So we can make times, uh, so x time 200. OK, yeah. I'm starting to get it. And then uh, space outside of the, bar the curly brackets. And then same with uh, y, so y times uh, 200. Cool. Perfect. And then else, so this is this is it for the first uh, first coordinate. Should I, should I keep this space in or get rid of it? Uh, you can, yeah, you no remove it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and else you can do path equal uh, the same but with L instead of yeah, perfect. And you can start with a space here, 
So this way we don't have extra space at the end, but we always have space at the beginning. Cool. Um, okay, so this is the string. Uh, and let's make a console log. So we use the dev tools inside Figma. Nice. Have the path. And then you go back to Figma, you open the, oh, it's already open. So you can just run and open the console. Cool. It's funny how joining live. Yeah, you can see everything that is from uh, Figma. That's cool. All right. Uh, so running Control it, Alt and there it is. We just yep. had the one. Because we forgot to do plus equal. Good call. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here. Running it again. Nice. There you go. And this is a circle made from code. So now we need to uh, make an SVG, I mean, uh, 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 a vector element inside the Figma. So after the for loop, you can create a new a new variable that we can call a, a star, because it will be a star at the end. Figma dot create vector. Parenthesis, yep. Awesome. And then no, uh, you can do star dot vector path. Oh, hold on. Ah, uh, no, no, no. You you cannot just give it the path like this. It's too easy. Ah, so okay. Nine thirty six. You're going too fast, Alex. <laughs> I'm trying to guess. I'm trying to see. <laughs> I'm letting Figma know this is the API I wanted. No. <laughs> so I, I, all the nodes, all the nodes are really based on objects properties. So you, cool. it's, most of the time you cannot just give it parent parameters and it does, except for the resize for some reason. Got it. So vector a uh, path. Um, okay. With the plural pass. Yeah, uh, and it's equal. It's not a function. It's equal to an array. Ah, okay. To an array. And inside okay. the array, you have an uh, an object. Okay, and you can do data semicolon uh, path. And another property is winding rule. Sorry. Uh, winding, wind, winding. <laughs> yeah, this uh, cool. is equal to uh, uppercase non-zero. Like that. Um, so, yeah. So, so when you do SVG and you have sometimes a path that is going over itself, you have this uh, winding or winding. I don't know if you. Say you did a winding. tutorial on that, didn't you? With with the person from was it Seoul? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, so you have a great little tutorial on that. Let me see if I can find that on your site. Do you know where it is? Tutorial Ooh, articles? I don't. I don't think it's on my site. No. Okay. You 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 did you did a great tweet about it, and I really liked it. Uh. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Soul. Nope. Can't find Soul, so I. Oh, it I think I did. Yeah, there is an SVG uh, article on my site. No. Uh, or I said I would do, and I never did it. No worries. I've been there. Oh, uh, um, because I have the SVG tips. Oh, here it is. Uh, where are you? It is called here. This one. There it is. That's exactly the one. Yep. Yeah, this is a really great um, th uh, code path. So here. see how the end, when the hand is going over the same yeah. path, it's um, it's playing with the fill rule. And here it's winding rule for some reason. It's not the same name. Got it. Um, but it's the same concept of when it overlaps itself, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nice. And uh, Figma needs this property. Uh, I remember that sometimes, like in the, when I played with that, if you missed the property, it would uh, fail. So God, we need to define it in the code. Funny, just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there could be a default, a default for that. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cool. But we could try, but back then it didn't work. Anyway, okay. so um, we can open the star to the frame. So you can do frame dot app and child star. All yep. right. Um, maybe let's let's give it uh, some fields so that we can see it better because it will be transparent. Oh, it will be. Should, it should come uh, in the gray, right? Yeah, it should. Uh, let's give it a try. Let's. let's... That's fine. We, we already yeah. got fills. We can go ahead and give it a random can... color. Mm -hmm. Type solid color. Let's grab that real quick. It, nice. it has to be uh, an array, the fields. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. And so it's an array with an object inside. 
There we go. We're getting somewhere. And <laughs> whew, there we go. Yay. Nice. All right. Um, cool. Okay. So we're seeing this path. I'm going to drag it down. We we didn't position it. That's why it's off to the side. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. well, well, actually, it's exactly where you would expect it. It's at z zero, zero as its center, right? So it, mm -hmm. it came in like right there. Exactly what we would expect. And it didn't close. So we need to handle that too, right? um we could but we don't need yeah, to we could <laughs> yeah i mean you can just uh so the for loop you can make it up to uh 11 instead of 10 because this way the angle will go oh, back to zero okay because got it. here the angle is going right it stops right before zero got it isn't there a letter that that like seals it or oh, uh... z yeah um you could do uh z or z or you could do like I don't path. Know what country. <laughs> Path uh, plus equals Z like that. What would that do? Mm -hmm. it? Let's see if that. Nice. Yeah. So you got a nice little. I I just need closure. All right. That's <laughs> that's what. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So we've got a. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's after an octagon. A, uh, a it's... decagon. It's a decagon, right? I'm pretty sure that's what Good it catch. is. Catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so so we're making decagons now how do we get that to a star you said there's a second circle involved yeah so if you go back to the for loop uh when it's not equal to zero so the when we actually do the lines no so not the move um we need to do a check if it's uh odds or even uh like uh yeah inside is i we need to check if i is even odd so this like way we I have modulo two kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So if I modulo two equals zero, um, yep, and you can do an else, and then we're gonna just change the two hundred. I'm guessing to a smaller. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, what do you think? One, one, one hundred. 100, yeah, that's All right. perfect. Uh, Thomas, is it a nonagon? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious. 10 sided polygon. Decagon, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I think in, is, is a nonagon basically. Oh, wow. What is a 9999 sided polygon called? No, 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 we should be able to run yep. this and see that some mm -hmm. of them. So, so basically, what's happening here? I'm I'm gonna kind of like do it with my fingers to kind of see if I understand it. We're starting at the top, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then, well, I think it's going to be the left or the right. Okay. Two. Oh, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that because that was the one that we wanted to yeah. to to close. Yeah. So we're starting there, and then every every other one we're drawing along the circle, but drawing in and then drawing out on a bigger circle, smaller circle. So yeah, it's just going around. And because it's ten, half of them are going to be inside, half will be outside. So let's see what we got. And we've got a freaking star, Louie. You drew a star. Hey. <laughs> you drew a star with math. Yeah. So we're starting here. Or maybe it's here. I can't. It has to be a bigger one because it's 200. So I, I oh, it's probably this one. And then the next one, it goes in because it's odd or mm -hmm. it's even, whichever. And then the next one's odd or even. Next one, really neat. Awesome. So we drew a star. Yeah. So that's a good hey, start. Um... Prime Agent, <laughs> thank you uh, for the the follow and thanks for dropping by. I uh, rated you yesterday and then you, you you followed back. Thanks so much. We're just uh, working on building out a Figma plugin. Uh, shout out to the Prime Agent. It has a fantastic stream if you're not already following. I hope I'm. I hope I spelled that right. I probably didn't. <laughs> that's that's. But yeah, I th I think I nailed it. Uh, but welcome. Thanks for coming through. Appreciate it. Um, 
so yeah, we, we got a star that we're creating uh, in Figma from just some JavaScript. This is awesome. So what do we want to do next? Well, we're going to add the UI so that uh, we can see uh, how the user can interact with your plugin. So we can Ooh. send data from the UI to the plugin itself. Cool. All right. So um, we're going to head to the UI.html. Is that what we're doing? Um, yeah, but to open the UI, we first need to add some code inside the code.js. Uh, so what you can do at the beginning of, of the file is figma.show UI. So at, at the very top, uh, even before ah, we create the okay. cool. yeah, show oh, UI we don't and want to any of that. Got it. UI. Yeah. Um, and do you have a parameter? It's a little weird, but it's underscore underscore HTML underscore underscore. Inside inside here? Yeah, here. It's a variable. I don't know what's the name from, but it's super weird. Just, so just like that? Show, show yeah. UI underscore underscore? Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So this will uh, open the UI. Um, and one, what we can do is uh, right after that, you can do figma.ui. OK, right after that, figma.ui. Uh, dot on message equal uh, a function. So our function, if you want, or function, a regular yeah, function. I do. And you can copy paste everything we had before and put it inside this function. Cool. So we will only generate the star as soon as we get a message from the UI. Um, okay. And also, we get data. So here, as a parameter, you can make it data. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so off that data, we'll, we'll be able to get like um, exactly how the, big we want certain things to be, because we'll be able yeah. to like use uh, different form fields. Awesome. Uh, maybe you can already add a console log of data so that when we uh, send it, we can see it in the console. Cool. Yeah. So in the UI now, um, you can uh, make a form. And inside Sorry, the form, the we'll have uh, two inputs. So um, the outside and the inside of the circles. So an input number. Oh, hold on. It wants to. Yeah, let's do this for now. Cool. Yeah. You can make a uh, min max if you want. You can make a default value. Uh, we we can just make a uh, whatever you want, basically. All right. Uh, this uh, is HTML. Well, so. <laughs> but you you can shores for now. Oh. And cool. give it a maybe a default value of two hundred or something. Ah, just... uh, it's a value equal. No, no, just value equal. Okay, cool. uh, and then two hundred. All right. Nice. Um, okay, you can duplicate it and uh, ah. make another one for the inside. All right. Uh, cool. Wait. There are some. It's the form lost this open tag, so the first line oh, is a yeah. bit weird. And you can remove the action. All right. Cool. And uh, then you need a okay. submit button or anything. Uh, yep. So you can just make a button and submit inside. Yeah, actually, you don't need to make type submit, just a little tip, because any button that is inside a form is always default as a right. submit button. Um, but awesome. if you need the button to not be a submit, you need to do type equal type button. button or something, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so um, this should... All right, so we got that. Yeah, that should show our UI, and because so it that's opens wired the iframe. Up, mm -hmm. that's wired up here. Uh, it's gonna pop open this iframe, and then on submit, we'll send a message, and we'll be able to see that data. And then this should all run. It'll be the same star we had before, but we're now triggering it from a UI. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, but it, it, we don't send any message yet to the to the plugin. So uh, we will you will show the UI, but we don't have anything that is sending data back. Okay. Um, but you can just run it and see if we have the iframe that opens. Object is oh. not extensible. Okay. Uh, 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 is this? Yeah. Let's see what's. Big matter show UI. Uh, hmm. 
If you comment all the figma.ui.onmessage, uh, if you only keep the show UI. Still okay. not that. Let's see, commenting out this No, it, no, 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 it's not. It's from the, because the UI doesn't even open, so it yeah, comes from point. before. Good point. Um, um, yeah, our syntax has to be off on the, uh, so show UI, is, is the I capitalized? Is, are both U and I capital? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is. And it's underscore, underscore, HTML, underscore, underscore. So that's Yeah, good. let me look at good. this one. Figma.ui.onmessage. Ah, hold on. This is wrong compared to yours. Oh, they're on message. Okay. Is it, could that be it? Yep, that was it. Yay. Nice. All right, cool. Got a little UI. So now we have the little Submit UI. Does nothing. Yep. But nice. Um, you can play with the UI. We uh, we don't need it here, but you can uh, resize it as well. You can give it a size uh, and so on. Ah. Uh, you can also automatically close the UI when the user uh, click on submit, for example. Got uh, it. That's all up to you. Okay. Um, so what we will do is when the user is submitting the form, we will send the data from the form to the, the plugin. So you can add a script tag and make it a uh, document.querySelector form. Uh, yep, uh, add event listener, submit. Uh, okay. And uh, and then, uh, so to send the data back, we need to do a parent. Since it's an iframe, you can do parent to send data to the parent of the iframe. You said, um, you said parent? Yeah, parent dot post message. Parent or parents? Parent. parent. Yeah, single uh, parent. Okay. Post cool. message. Yeah. Uh, and you send an object inside. It's a function with a yeah. Uh, and you can do plugin message. This is another object, and this is the data we can we, we want to send. So okay. we will send the outside the outer uh, to the big circle and the small circle. Uh, so it. you can make two two keys. Um, yeah, you can add IDs or classes to the inputs to select them. So it should be opposite order. So outer. Um, uh, document that query selector you e can get the value. So outer and then dot the, value. Yeah, value. Right? Cool. Yeah. And then same for inner. Okay, so we're we're getting both of those, sending those along uh, in our plugin message. Is is this right? Uh, just camel yep. case there for plugin message. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, we just need uh, so uh, something that's a little weird with JavaScript and the input number. You get string, not a number, as a value. So we need to do a parse float uh, of the whole value. Cool. Uh, parse float, not parse int. We could do parse in, but if the user wants uh, decimals, I don't know. <laughs> cool. Makes sense. All right. Yep. Cool. So Give it a shot. we can try and see if we have the data inside the console. Um, post oh. message on DOM window, origin, target origin provided null. Hmm. Uh, Target origin. Bus provided. message failed. It's not. So this. Let's see where we're where we're going. Yeah. So hit oh. there. Yeah. Can you can you try to do uh, e dot prevent default? To, because I, I think the iframe is being reloaded because we submit the form. Got it. Okay, cool. 
Mm. No. Nope. Target but origin. But now you see the the HTML is not leaving, so that's a good news, because before the the page was being cleared. Yeah. Huh. Uh. So. Parent the message. Past Let me look at UI here. Oh, yeah, uh, there is a little thing we need to add um, after the... So post message, you have two parameters. The first one is the data, so the plugin message and so on. But on line 16, you can add uh, a second parameter. Uh, so, no, the 17, I mean, on the actual line, yeah. After the object, you can do comma, uh, and just a, a, a little star, like as there is. Yeah, yeah, as a string. Ah, got it. Oh, and is that yeah. like um, the allowed domains or something? Um, I guess. Uh, uh, getting an error now. It's not liking something. Did I put this in the wrong spot? Like a message, there's that closing bracket, there's that closing bracket, but it's getting a little funky. Might just be a false. Uh, there we go. Yep. Okay, hit outer inner 200, 200. Awesome. We didn't change those. Let's see if changing those. Boom, 206, 196. Awesome. Okay, so we're getting our data in from the outer and the inner. So now we can, I, I, I can see how we can pipe that in. Yeah. Right? So inside the the for loop, inside of the two hundred, you can yeah. Cool. So inner outer. And these were defaulted to to two hundred. Let's default it to one hundred. Um, and I guess we can move them later. Uh, how did you resolve the previous error of UI not showing? Good, good question. So, um, wait, oh, the previous error of the UI not showing. That one so was the... um, me typing on capital M message here. I, I had capital M message, and so that was breaking right away. So just lowercase that. Um, and then this one was. I'm not sure what that property there. Yeah, it's. Is. Uh, I just. Target origin. So, yeah, so, yeah. so that's what I was complaining about. I was saying the target origin is not found or something like that. So we needed to add a, basically take anything as your target origin um, there. So awesome. So we got it up and running. Let's uh, make a star. Let's go 350 and 50. It should be a really pointy star. Yep. And it is. It is awful. And it's exactly what I asked for though. Nice. We're making all kinds of ridiculous shapes. This is cool. Great. Um, okay. Let, let's make it. Uh, let's position the the star to the center because it's a bit odd for the moment. Yep. Yeah. So, so we'll do that in the code. Um, and also, you can uh, stop uh, like the close plugin. You can comment that uh, this way we you keep the UI always visible and you can run again and again and have oh, multiple stars. Nice. Okay. Cool. So this. Start at X. Um, Where's this? Oh, I mean, it's a yeah. We will add the We're property. Add it, cool. So the coordinates. Yeah. Start at X uh, is equal to um, the frame width divided by two. So we start from the center of the frame, and then we will uh, remove the outer radius. So minus outer radius, or the what whatever outer just outer. Yeah, outer. Okay. And you you do the same for the Y, so frame, uh, frame height. Yeah. This should make it center. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Just about. Uh, do you need to divide outer by two? Mm. It shouldn't because it's a radius. Oh. Oh, yeah. did you didn't close the plugin and run again? Ah, uh, okay, I got it. Yeah, that uh, just makes it worse. Um, hmm. Uh, wait, and you're sure? 
can you just scroll a little up in the the loop? So we start with the outer and so we move to the outer go. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, that's good. Um hmm. So this one, let's see, start from the frame with, uh, this is the exposition, that's the center of the star, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, center. No, 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 that's the, the... It's the top left. Yeah, it's the top left. Got it, okay. So it's the frame width divided by two minus the outer. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That seems like this should make sense. Chat, any ideas? Chat's usually pretty good about uh, bailing me out of things. It's just a bit mm. off. So the order is 200 and the center is 100. And because the, the Y, isn't the Y good? Uh, let's or, see. No, so, it's, so right... no, it's a little too... too... Yeah. yeah, I know gonna... it's... I'm gonna drag the copy off, and I'm gonna uh, center oh, these. Oh wait, 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 wait! Oh no, you got it? No, never mind. No, 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 no. So the other thing is that like that is technically centered, but it doesn't look it because our star is slightly rotated. Y yeah, you that know we what I mean? can. Uh, we can change that if you go back to the angle, uh, the variable angle. Um, you can. Uh, you can do minus math dot math dot pi divided by two so we'll add a little offset to the angle so that we start with a so that the star will uh land on the speed all right okay now that looks damn no, it's near not. perfect it's <laughs> not but it's close now it's uh, but why so what we got was uh, positioned 380 and 361. What we, no, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm reading the wrong one. 50 and 50, but what we need is 59.79 and 69.1. Oh, but yeah, because the, the, the bonding rate like of the star is not the, is not two times the outer, the outer uh, circle. Got it, right. Uh, yeah, because this is a rectangle. Um. Yeah, because that top thing, if it was more like, how do I, yeah, I, I can't even do that. Um, so chat says, uh, when I is equal to zero, make X equal zero and Y equal one. Is is, is, I... is is that to rotate it, Sasox? Make X equal to zero? I equals zero, make X equals zero and Y equal one. Hmm. Curious I... about that. X times outer, I mean X. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. No, but I, I think that's that's what the coordinates are because it's it's like mat if you do mat that sign yeah. and you give it zero, you will get zero. But if you do the co uh, cosine, you will get one. So if we run this, this should log for each. And so when I was zero, okay, we're getting six and negative one. So yeah, that's because we have the offset, the minus method by divided Got by it. two. Got it. Okay, so that's that, that's what it was, but now we're rotating it. Awesome. Uh, but so well, now, yeah. Yeah, the center is maybe we need some more. Um, Info. But Some like, math. we could actually um, go and make the outer uh, smaller, and then that that'll break it in, in that way. But I, I don't I don't care about expecting that to happen. Oh, nice! Uh, it even does that. Max. <laughs> yeah, it's even like the same uh, validation. That's so cool. Um, what we could add is the third uh, input for the amount of um, arms of the star. Oh. See, now we have only five, but we could have more and less. So yeah, let's do that real quick. That's easy to do. Cause, uh, so in the UI, arms, if you add another... Two times arms, right? Um, yeah. Awesome. 
Uh, so this is not a number. Or no, no, it it absolutely is. Uh, it is min... a number, but what you what you can do is yeah, a minimum of one. Um, you can keep the max of yeah, five hundred. <laughs> that's fine. But the step, you can set the step value to one. Because we don't we want don't half. Want floats. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, and then and we the have ID, yeah. Arms, arms, arms. And we could even, I mean, we probably want to do uh, labels for these, right? Like, I, I, I love that I can make a Figma plugin with just HTML, CSS, and just make it in a way that I know. It's not a drag and drop thing. It's not some special like Figma language. It's just, it's just how I know how to code. Um, outer and let's do it again. And then grab this. Cool. Uh, arms and inner. Okay, so returning arms. We're not parsing float, but we're parsing int. Right, and then code. Uh, let's break arms out of there. And then you said instead of ten here, we do arms times two. Mm -hmm. Up. Oh, uh, I think that parentheses didn't put in the wrong spot. Awesome. Now you All can, right. Wait, wait. Yeah. There is an issue with the parentheses. There is one parentheses too much. Good eye. It removed the other one. All right, nice. Thanks for spotting that. So if we go there, we want uh, nine sided or, or nine armed. Nice. All right, cool. It's going right in the dead center still. That's actually more centered than the regular one just because of the way that that is more like circular, right? Yeah. The more you will add, the closer to a circle it gets. Yeah. That's... Uh, if you add like hundreds. That's cool. So that's like one of those like starburst things that like you do like sail <laughs> or new, right? And then you have gold. God, I remember doing like intro to design classes and this was like half of it. Fun times that I do not miss. Design is my passion. That's a good sticker. That's really nice. Uh, yeah, but you, you want it to pop, so you always want to add red on green. That <laughs> is scientifically shown to be the uh, thing that people like to read most. Uh, there's no issues with it whatsoever. Perfect. That's perfect. It's like CSS Houdini for Figma. That's a good way of putting it. That's interesting. Yeah, because honestly, like I, I love the potential here of like you have a certain... Ooh, sorry, they have like a certain style or a certain way that you, you want to do things and just being able to build out shapes with just um, with with uh, SVG paths. That's really freaking cool. And what I just did there, we could have absolutely done with <laughs> design is my passion. <laughs> um, we could have absolutely done with code, right? Like we, we I'm, I'm sure we can choose fonts. I think I saw you, you, you uh, hit fonts in your invoices code i think it was like a figma mm -hmm. load font sync family open sans we could we could grab the specific font family and then add colors to it change the color do rotations like i can see and from being familiar with other apis uh how i would go about that right like create a, a new text type add text to it um you rotate, you you center it the way that we've been centering things. It's just really, really cool. I'm actually curious why they don't have, or if they have, a function that centers things. <laughs> because they have it in their thing, right? Mm. Be, um, sorry, because they have it as a uh, as this. I'm I'm wondering if 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 you can use this as part of the API. But it's all based on no. So what we could do instead of using the the radius is calculate the the bonding rects of the the vector. Um, oh, and then center based on that. Mhm. Mm I'm just trying to find how we can get the. So we can get the width and the height of the nodes. 
So if you go back to the code, maybe if you do instead of minus the radius, if you do um, so, yeah. Uh, so minus started with divided by two, and the y is the same. Start with that height. Let's find out. Hmm. So we're gonna go with five, and that looks pretty centered. Yeah, that's exactly it. Boom. Yep. Nice. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, that still feels like one more step than, you know, because, like, this bit uh, where you can do arranging of items, you, you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming pretty much everything is, is open in the API for us to use, uh, but maybe not um, that. But that. That feels like I'm, one... I'm not I would be surprised if those are available because it's, uh, I mean, it's the UI, but T, we could just replicate it with code. Um, yeah, true, just... true. You just kind of do the bounding box. Yeah, I, I guess you wouldn't have to put that in there, but it might be easier. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited by like all the, wait, bundling React? Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, I didn't. And so you can use re React in Figma plugins. Wow. So I've I've heard of like oh, okay. So sorry, I'm I'm just like excited with with potential here. So we've we've got a few things that are kind of percolating in in my brain right now. One, uh, just this entire thing where Figma plugin API that, that I can build my own plugins. Figma has an API where I can like um, query f f a, f a Figma document from an app, like f from an external thing entirely. Uh, let me see, like F Figma developers, they've got, yeah, they've got a REST API so that I can uh, actually like query a Figma document and get frames from that. Uh, and I can integrate that with plugins the embed is pretty cool like the, they've got other cool stuff but like being able to combine these things i i've i heard that github has like a figma file uh with all their icons for their icon set in there and whenever a designer like tweaks an icon or adds a new icon uh a build step is kicked off and they have uh they they basically hit that document from a rest api pull in all those SVGs into their GitHub repository and update the SVG files in the GitHub repo without having to like copy paste stuff out or like have to do that stuff manually. Like imagine if you have like 400 little icons that you have to go in and be like, oops, I need to update this one. Right click, save, drag it in, you know, like update the code. That'd be a pain in the ass. So they're able to use the APIs and update that stuff. Uh, that just sounds fantastic so much so that my voice is squeaking i'm so <laughs> excited louis um so yeah like, like that kind of stuff and then being able to work the opposite direction right and like bring things into figma through the plugins uh mm -hmm. this is just one of the many reasons i'm so excited about figma in general um collaboration and having all my work backed up in the cloud is another you know whole big topic but this kind of stuff this uh, automation and this workflow uh, just feels like it opens a ton of possibilities, and I, I love seeing the people in the chat um, getting excited about it. I, I'm I'm curious if Scott Kellum is uh, is thinking about some type Tura implementation, or you know, like like okay, how can I make this this work for me? There's just some fantastic people here that I'm I'm sure they're uh, they're picking up some ideas from this. So I I I'm feeling this is gonna spark something and like a couple months from now we will see someone launching a figma plugin that's going to be pretty awesome yay more plugins that's always good for everybody yeah um do we do we want to do anything else here is, is there anything uh we, we're gonna make uh, it, I, I shared yeah. yeah i shared some uh some plugins um uh to you like some awesome. zip files awesome. all right um, so we can just see and explore image to particles oh cool okay let me uh let me unzip these 
So we have some limitation on the Figma side. So in the code.js, there are things we can do. For example, we cannot create a canvas and play with uh, pixels and so on. You always have to go back to the iframe. Um, so if we try um, so the image to particle plugin, it's a right. plugin that will uh, get the image from the design, send it to the UI. The UI will create a canvas, uh, draw the image in the canvas, convert the canvas into uh, particles and send the coordinates of the particles to the Figma design file. Oh, cool. So, so if you, if you uh, go back to Figma um, and you... Um, uh, go back to Figma, sorry. I'm trying to like, yeah. <laughs> find all this stuff. All right, cool. I'm in Figma. And you go to... Yeah, we need one with an image. So if you go back to the, the previous design that you had with the front end horse. I'm pretty proud of, of what we've accomplished here. <laughs> I just want to say this feels like uh this, this feels like the fridge of someone who has like a three year old, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> look what I did, Mom. Great, another another star. Sure, I'll put it on the fridge. Sure, <laughs> honey, it's great. <laughs> uh um, cool. Coming back here. Yep. Yeah. So if you uh pick a yeah, Steve image. Yeah, and then you, you right click. Uh, <laughs> Let's pop this over. Oh, hold on, I'll pop it here. Oh, I'm trying to trying to pull it out. There we go. Cool. We got Steve. Uh, plugins. Mm -hmm. So you can import uh, the new plugins, plugin. Manifest. So the right. image to particle one. Figma plugins. Uh, image to particles. Cool. Mm -hmm. Manifest. Awesome. And then you you run it. So again, right click. Image to particle has been imported. Okay, so plugins, development, image to particle, running image to part is so freaking cool. And so, this and is all are, uh, circles. Yeah, they're little SVGs that I can manipulate in here. That's really neat. So, so, so I, yeah, I that, I that do have it out the many, canvas many... is 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 what you're saying. Yeah, so you can open the UI just to click quickly see uh, what's happening here. Oh, the UI? Um, oh, yeah. got it. Yeah. So see on message, I'm getting data. So data, the data is the image from the from the design. Because it's a two-way street, I, like you said before. Yeah. Got mm -hmm. it. You can send from Figma to the, the iframe, and you can send from the iframe back to Figma. So That's I'm getting really cool. an, an image. That's why I do uh, a create object URL and... So a new blob from the data from the image. I draw the image. I get the pixels data and so on. Yeah, you're and doing this can only be here. done on the iframe side because here I have access to all the um, HTML and JavaScript APIs. For example, I could have access to the webcam I think. So you could enable the webcam in the iframe and then record the user, take a picture or something, and then send it back to Figma, and boom, you have uh, the picture wow. of the user. Yeah, this really unlocks a lot wow um, that's that's an awesome plugin seriously like being able to turn any image into particles it's just i mean like yeah trying to focus on it oh can't zoom in there we go I'm trying to again oh man my keyboard is like not connecting so i'm getting like half responses there we go yeah so Basically, if if there's something cool, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think because like you can't do everything because that's to kind of come back as SVG or you could create a JPEG and send that JPEG back, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, you cannot send, but well, you need to send a Biz64 to Figma. But okay. basically, yeah, you can send a JPEG. Okay. Um, but yeah, here I'm not sending SVG, I'm sending coordinates. Uh, if you see what I right. do in the post message, uh, it's just an array with the radius, like you have x, y, and then the radius. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm just thinking of like if if I wasn't um, getting an SVG as the result, how would I do it? But you would just send back that JPEG, like the way that you might write. Um, I, I'm. I'm just trying to think of like if if it's more complex than this, like if it's maybe like a 3D image, as Amit said, um, where it it's like you know maybe you can run 3JS inside uh, the UI or s something a bit more complex, like a shader or something. Uh, if you want to make a really cool gradient generator, but gradients that like can't be done by CSS, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
I yeah, I had a if, plugin if... using Twitch, yes. I just Oh I'm really? Trying to... Yeah, oh, I'm cool. trying to And Alan, um... good to see you. Welcome in. Uh Got some great people here. Um Yeah, so that's the image to particles one. We're working on uh Wafi, good to see you. W welcome, James. Um yeah, so for people who are just joining, we are can't be done with CSS. Oh, can you you can can you do CSS to a JPEG? Because it has to be like either put into an image file or it has to be done as you just did with the particles, where you convert it to um, data that can then be turned into an SVG. But basically, it has to come back either as like SVG style data or as a um, or like as, as text and you would manipulate it that way or as a JPEG if it's like a 3D rendered thing. I think there are some 3D plugins that allow you to like manipulate a 3D object and then click like, yes, import. And then it drops a JPEG into your Figma file. I don't know. When, when, when did I take the steps? I'm not sure exactly when I did, um, <laughs> but I, I, tr I try to do it throughout. I try to do it throughout. Um, so yeah, uh, there was one more blobs. Do we want to run blobs? Yeah. Uh, Development, uh, import plugin, Figma plugins, blobs, open. Um. Oh, I click manifest, open. All right, blobs has been imported. Uh, do I just have to run yeah. this one? Yeah, you can just run it anywhere. Ooh, you columns, just three ask. rows. Mm -hmm. Whoa, I did not, I, I wasn't expecting that. That is, <laughs> that's freaking cool. So what's going on here? So um, you ask for an amount of rows and columns and yeah. I'm making like sorts of blobs. So it's circles, uh, like circles, smaller and smaller circles. And I offset them with some noise, like Berlin noise. Got um, it. And I, I made this plugin because I was sending postcards uh, over like in the winter, uh, like plotter, like I would make them with the axi draw and I needed to make quickly a lot of postcards. Um, so I, I made the plugin to just generate my postcards in the good, like the the size of the postcards is the, I mean, the size of the frame is the size of the postcard. So I could quickly print them on the A4 paper. That's so cool. Like on, uh, honestly, this as a plugin um, would be killer. Like I've seen so many things where like, um, here, let me just kind of, like whip up a quick thing that's gonna turn out to be not great, but you know, we'll still see how it goes. Like I've seen designs and, and I enjoy designs where it's like um, this sort of thing. I, I think I've actually leaned on this sort of thing before where, uh, let me see, grab that, move this off like this sort of thing. And you, you could even have it like where the gradient or like the, the color changes as the lines go. So like the inner is like a redder kind of thing. And then this is just kind of like a background image. And then you have some like strong typography over here. Like that's a really cool element to add to designs that I like to make in Illustrator, but have no idea how to make in Figma. And you just kind of unlocked that uh, in my brain once again, Louie. Like that is... Uh, that is really cool. We know banking or some nonsense, right? Uh, and then you get like a nice font. I don't know what we got around here. Rubik, I don't like that one. I don't know. I'm just like, I, I want to get into designing now because all the stuff that I've loved about, um, I've loved about Illustrator come or, or, I, I can't do them in Figma. Like I, I, I love Illustrator's blend tool where you can like take two paths and say blend and it kind of like does this neat thing in between and I can't do that in Figma. But now maybe I can with 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 a plugin. I don't know. Th this is this is super it's cool. It's just code. So if you know how to code it. Uh, I, have, I have to be good at coding now? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Never. Uh, calling it off. Calling it but off. But I, yeah. That was the cool thing with because it's JavaScript and you can I I'm using P5 a lot on CodePen and I'm using P5 as well on Figma. 
So in the UI, I'm loading P5 to do some Canvas uh, stuff, and That's then I'm cool. sending all the data back to uh, to the plugin. Um, so uh, you can I use uh, like you can use oh. libraries here. Yeah. See? So this is the like the Perlin knows, and then JSAP for some reason. Uh, you're you're pre you're bringing in GSAP into Figma. That's, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> no, 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 but, but no, but like that's so freaking cool that I can if I want to, because I want to, I want to do it. You can't no, tell there me. No, there is a, there must be a reason. Me. Right? Yeah, you're probably using oh one for of the, the easing. Utils. Yeah, if okay, if you look at the easing, easing the custom ease. Yeah, got it. Because I'm not using the easing as an animation tool, but right. as a data tool. Oh, uh, so if you cool. scroll online, uh, so thirty nine. I'm 39. defining the the easing curve, Custom and then ease. I'm using I'm using the the ease uh, as a way to get the radius of my circles, so that the the closer you get to the bigger circle, the the smaller the space between them is. Uh... Wait, I don't know if it's clear, but so what's an easing? It's making something going yeah, slow at the I end of the it. animation. Yeah, so like here what here I'm doing is, is a big gap and then it Yeah, it, so it's yeah. fast and then it's slower when you get to the end. Yeah, and I'm using just for that. That's really clever cuz that like I I noticed that now and it's something that I I I wouldn't like if I was trying to do this I'd be like why doesn't this look as good as yours? It's because Yeah, if you have that. the same gap between all the circles, you don't get this 3D look because yeah. here because like it, it gets closer. Kind of, yeah, this one doesn't look as good as the others, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit more uniform, and then these feel like more three D. That's really cool, man. And um, and I sent you a last one. Uh, speaking of of three JS, um, we're not so you can first open the code pen link because it started from code pen. Uh, like it's something I made a while ago. Uh, for me, I think it's even yeah, it's private. So on okay. the top right, we have uh, controls, and uh, cool. you can play with the controls and see what it does. Nice. So I'm like I'm creating a bunch of particles and I um uh like make them based on some noise. Uh, the pattern is different, and then as soon as I was I was happy with the results, I would import the data from the particles into Figma, and this way I could get a SVG from this image. And then you export as SVG. Yeah, that's and then th awesome. this is a so. And if you click to the other link to Figma, yeah, uh, uh, let me open that up. It may take a while because it's a big lots file. Lots of particles. Yeah, I I made I made Figma crushed a few times when I was creating like ten thousand particles. Ah, that see it here. is it's... gorgeous, though. Look at and yeah, this is just circles. That is so I, cool. Wait. I actually think I have the. Uh, I may have the printed version somewhere. Um, I you you sent it to your plotter. Yeah, that was the goal. So ah, That's see, so for cool. example, this one. E, That's e. gorgeous. So yeah, you use black paper and you 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 handed your plotter a white pen. And oh, then it just so do the rest for me. It's all little dots from Figma. I love that. Yeah, yeah. the shapes are gorgeous. And it's just just circles and math at the end of the day. But such a cool result. And I I, I love that you got to take that like using the pen plotter, or making it physical. There's something just about that that makes it a bit more special. I don't know. It's it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the, the blobs, for example. That's really cool. So, yeah, that that that's why I started with Figma plugins because I needed a way to like convert my canvas from CodePen to SVG so I could plot them easily. And I mean, there are a few plugins that exist to export right. canvas to SVG, but this was really better for me because it was super easy to set up. You don't need to install any npm package or whatever. You just you know, manifest.json, ui.html, code.js, and here we go. Oh. Yeah, you've you completely blown uh, the door open on what I thought like Figma plugins could do or were capable of, or just, or, 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 or I think especially the thing I took away most from this uh, was 
how accessible it is to me as a developer. The fact that I just need three files and those files are, uh, let me just open it up again, uh, a JavaScript file, a JSON file, and an HTML file. And I'm, I'm yeah. good to go. I can bring in uh, scripts from anywhere, from CDNs. Uh, so if, if I can basically ac have access to it, I, I, I can use it. Uh, the, the UI can pretty much do anything that, that the web can do. And it can talk back and forth. I can take images from Figma. I can send images to Figma. I can bring in SVG. It can be generative. Like this is something that I assumed was going to be a lot more daunting than it is. The fact that I just have to wrap my head around three files. Like I thought it was like, I, I can't remember the last time I worked on a project that was only three files big. Right, like every website I have, at least has like a few uh, config files and uh, license and every right? like, like like there's there's so many files in every project to to open up a plugin and see three files and one of them is is not really anything. I have to wrap my head around two files. Uh, that's fantastic. And yeah, also you can put yeah. it on on GitHub and uh, that's super convenient for you. Uh, all my plugins are on GitHub so that I have this uh, history. So if I change a plugin, I can find back uh, like the result I had a week ago. I was happy with. Um, like God. the versioning is super easy because it's it's just JS and HTML. And as a web developer, I'm used to to that kind of format. Right. And and Git. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Louis, thank you so much for walking us through this. <laughs> um, was was there anything else you wanted to drop on us or share b before we headed it off? Well, no. I mean just. If you're interested in Figma plugins, just download a sample and, and give it a try. And um, if you want some uh, source from what we did today, I can share. Uh, the, the star actually wrote an article on my website. So if you want to take right. it slowly on your uh, on your side. Yeah, this one. I'm dropping this in uh, chat here. Uh, and t Thomas agrees. Uh, he says that it's, it's really accessible even for me. I, I think Thomas... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't give himself enough credit, but yes, uh, it's 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 incredibly accessible, um, not overwhelming at all. I really thought it would be like like a like a mini framework they built or something like that. But boy, was this uh, a lot less in 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 all the right ways, right? Like it just it just works. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's and yeah. No, oh, that's it. It's oh, very I, straightforward. Um, I I thought you were, you were starting a sentence. Cool. No. Um, <laughs> No, but... I, I approve your message. <laughs> Thank you. See, you have to do it. You have to say right. You have to say yep. You have to. You have to do it. Otherwise, the other person's like, "Am I smart? Am I doing a good job? I don't know." I need that feedback too. We're all people. We're all people. People. Um, but thank you so much. You're a good student today. <laughs> thank you so much, chat, for hanging out. Um, please give Louis some uh, some some blobs, some circles, some confetti that represents your feelings. And also what 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 you saw on stream, uh, because I think that um, this was a super cool one that I, I've been I've been excited. Nice, some um, got some. Uh, is that the devil yeah. horns or something? I, if, if, I, I don't know. It's a good thing. Is all I know. It's 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 rock on. It's good stuff. Um, unfortunately, yeah. Is Louis on Twitter? Thank you. I'll drop that again. Uh, yes, he is. My keyboard is really not playing ball here um yes he goes by mambaleo so you, you might know him by that handle um and yeah uh, let me drop your, your website one more time just in case uh i'm going to drop this article one more time don't go find out how to get to the rest of your website from there i think uh but yeah again thank you so much and definitely follow uh louis he has like fantastic tutorials shows us how to make that apple thing like just all, all, always teaching a wonderful part of the community. Uh, we greatly appreciate you, Louie. And uh, we, we got to have you back on so you can earn that mystery thing that I haven't thought of yet. And it's definitely going to be a thing by the time you come back, maybe. So uh, yeah, thank you so much again. And uh, chat, hang in there. We're going to find someone fantastic to raid. And uh, we will see you next week. I'm trying to think. Hold on just one second. Let me, let me see.
Yes, next week we have Kevin Lewis coming on to teach us some Nux stuff. It's going to be fantastic. Kevin is is great. So uh, definitely come back next week and follow if you're not already following or subscribing. I forget what the terms are. I think it's following. Follow. <laughs> and uh, I will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Take care. Let's go raid. Thank you. Thank you.